Hello everybody and welcome to the first long form regular size YouTube video on the Mesozoic Maniac channel. Oh. Excuse me, the Madly Mesozoic channel. Don't even know my own channel name. Today's video we're going to ask a fun little question. We are going to propose a hypothetical scenario in which several species of dinosaur appear in the modern day United States through a temporal time warp. Let's say they start someplace like Kansas or Colorado and slowly migrate outward. For funsies, we're going to make this take place solely in the US rather than the whole world. Each group here is going to start with a pretty steady population. About a thousand for small herbivores, 500 for small carnivores, 300 for herd dinosaurs, 100 for sauropods, 75 for mid-sized carnivores, and about 20 large theropods. Now the large theropods are probably T-Rex or Carcharodontosaurus or something. You know, your typical theropod build. Now we're going to attack this with a few questions in mind. Number one, how would they fare in the ecosystem? Number two, how would they interact with humans and infrastructure? Number three, how would the government react? And number four, what are the situations in which they succeed? And we're going to start off with small herbivores. Animals like Hypsilophodon, Protoceratops, Stegoceras. That's the kind of range we're looking at for this category. These animals would honestly blend into the current biosphere in America pretty well. Probably filling the same niche as small and mid-sized deer rabbits etc and just like those animals will probably be agricultural pests depending on how fast they can reproduce they may or may not become widespread very quickly they'll be preyed upon by animals like bears wolves cougars etc as well as any predators that came through the time portal with them other than eating crops and out of garbage cans i can see these animals becoming very popular as pets with modern reptile fanatics such as myself who knows we could have a hypsilophodon market just as diverse as the ball python market with a bunch of crazy different morphs oh man if the animals weren't causing too much of a problem the government would probably encourage regular hunting and that's it if they were a serious ecosystem disruptor however i can see the government doing some bounties or maybe even a genetically modified disease or infertile individuals like they're doing with mosquitoes in florida now for some situations in which small herbivores succeed I'm gonna say number one spread quickly enough and wide enough to become a permanent part of the ecosystem System, and number two, be adopted and bred by people in the pet trade. For our second category, we have small to mid-sized carnivores. Now, this is really two categories in one. You'll see why in a minute. This is going to be anything as small as Procompsognathus to even Utah Raptor. This category of dinosaurs is probably going to be the most complex in determining their ability to survive. Dromaeosaurs are probably the most adaptable to different climates due to the presence of their feathers and could likely survive closer to the poles than other dinosaurs. Smaller theropods like Velociraptor, Compsognathus, and Oviraptor would be competing with animals like coyotes, foxes, birds of prey, and bobcats. These smaller theropods would probably struggle against predatory mammals of their size because those mammals would be much heavier than they are, despite being the same size and volume. A Velociraptor might be able to intimidate these animals, but unless it can get the upper hand with its little sickle claw, it's probably toast. They could, however, pretty easily compete with animals like badgers, possums, and raccoons. Their diet in the modern world would probably be pretty similar to theirs. Birds, mice, snakes, frogs, eggs, fish, plenty more. There's a pretty good chance they'd go after pets like cats and smaller dogs as well. These animals could probably pretty easily thrive, establish populations, and quickly become just another pest species, possibly outcompeting their mammalian counterparts. It would be just as common to see a velociraptor dead on the side of the road as it would be a possum. Also, I'd like to point out real quick that arboreal theropods like Archaeopteryx or Mycoraptor would be absolutely defenseless against birds of prey. Eagles and hawks are quite literally the perfection of what these dinosaurs set out to become in the Mesozoic. This would be like having a little willy tank from 1960 fight a f***ing M1 Abrams. I think the reaction from both people and the government would be pretty similar to that of small herbivores here. Probably gonna be a lot of petroodontids and tiny raptors. Government might try to intervene, but I honestly see them becoming too big and widespread of a problem for them to deal with. Now for mid-sized theropods such as the Lophosaurus or Utah Raptor or any other theropod in that range would become a big problem for everybody. More specifically something like Utah Raptor. 
Raptor, Austro Raptor, Dakota Raptor. Theropods in this weight class can easily dispatch about any animal in the US, barring grizzly bears, and even then it's a decent fight. Although it's unlikely that dromaeosaurs actually lived in packs, there's still a chance two or three of them might gang up and take down something like a moose or a grizzly. These guys would toss around a white-tailed deer like the Hulk tosses around Loki in the Avengers. I am a deer. You dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. Mammal. These animals would be a nightmare for livestock, rural communities, and anyone alone in the woods. They would essentially take over the niche of the ambush predator in America and do it a lot better than mountain lions. A single Utah raptor could do as much damage to a field of livestock as a pack of wolves. They could probably reproduce fast enough to become a whole ass headache for the government as well. Missing persons, livestock decimation, property damage, the list goes on. The government would have to straight up declare war on these guys, and it would be a long one, encouraging or even training people to become raptor hunters. Chances are these animals are well camouflaged and just small enough to conceal themselves in the forests and mountains. Some situations in which these animals succeed, all of them, they're pretty well suited for the modern world. They have a plethora of different food resources. Mammals, human garbage, humans, they're pretty good. And for our third category, we have herd dinosaurs. And this is hadrosaurs, ceratopsians, and small sauropods. I can actually see these dinosaurs doing quite well in the modern US. They would have almost no competition or predators and have plenty of grass land to graze on if they do graze on grass. I don't believe grass was even around in the Mesozoic. Now there is the problem of them probably moving on to farmland. These guys would absolutely steamroll any farmland they came across if they do eat crops. It would become a pretty big problem for the food supply chain and the government would step in pretty quickly. Their only predators would be humans and larger carnivorous dinosaurs which won't even be around and I'll tell you why by the end of this video. I really don't think humans would allow these animals to roam free without any restriction. I think I think a lot of people will have sympathy for these big animals because, well, they're massive and majestic, kind of like elephants, and would want them to be placed in some dinosaur preserves. I imagine the government allocating a few hundred acres in a pretty lush environment, essentially like the one in Jurassic World Dominion, for these animals to remain. Situations in which these animals succeed, uh, number one, they're placed in dinosaur preserves. Number two is maybe they don't even eat crops and they don't eat grass, so they're only only food source is low bushes and short trees. And for our fourth category, we have sauropods slash titanosaurs. These animals would most likely not survive very long in the modern US. These animals are incredibly large, and live in incredibly large herds. They would definitely have no problem finding any food as America has more than enough forest for them. And with these guys, if they don't eat crops, they're definitely gonna trample them. Small towns could be overrun and severely damaged by a passing herd of sauropods, 50 to 100 strong. These animals would have absolutely zero predators and would likely steamroll through a single forest in a matter of weeks. They would simply be too much of a problem to be left alive and they might be allowed to exist in dinosaur preserves with other species Species, but their population would be pretty heavily restricted in those preserves. Humans would most likely have too much sympathy for these animals, again, like with the smaller herd dinosaurs, but I think people will be more realistic with them because they're pretty much low-level kaiju. So situations in which sauropods survive, very limited numbers in dinosaur preserves. And for our final category, we have large carnivorous theropods. And this is anything from Carnotaurus to Tyrannosaurus rex. These animals would also probably not survive for very long. They could survive off of the other dinosaurs that came in through the time warp with them. But once the government gets a hold of those dinosaurs, they'd be forced to rely on modern animals for their prey. One or two individual Tyrannosaurs could easily disrupt the balance of an ecosystem in a matter of a month or so. And if the humans don't wipe them out first, they will most certainly unintentionally starve themselves by overeating the available prey. Or they'll struggle to even find enough prey to keep them alive in the first place and they'll have to turn to human populations. A T-Rex could definitely grab a good amount of people in a populated area, but it won't be long before SWAT or a hunter shows up with a high caliber rifle and takes it out. Now we'd all like to think that T-Rex or Giganotosaurus could soak up rifle rounds like a sponge, but chances are one to three rounds of 308 would do the job. It's just a big animal. I can very easily see states and the federal government giving out bounties for large theropods, and hunters and rednecks would make 
pretty quick work of them if that was the case. They don't exactly have the option of hiding in the woods given their size. Not only are they just not very likely to be comfortable in forests dense enough to conceal them, but they could easily be spotted by helicopter or drone. I don't think there would be any protest from people to hunt these animals to extinction. They may or may not be placed in dinosaur preserves. I think the government would more likely kill them all rather than transport one or two to a dinosaur preserve. Maybe they'll keep one in a Jurassic Park style paddock at a zoo. So for me, the only situations in which a large theropod survives modern America are as follows. Number one, large theropods would be introduced into dinosaur preserves as a predator to control the population of the park's large residents and to be hunted by the wealthy for a pretty penny. Number two, large theropods are kept in zoos for people to look at where they will live a sad and sanitized existence. Thank you guys for watching my very first long form content video. Uh, most of my content is YouTube Shorts, uh, which is probably where you're coming from, or TikTok. And that won't be stopping. I still love making those videos, but I would really like to start making more consistent content with my own voice. Not that, it, not that it's not, not good. I like making those videos. But if you like this video, please do me a massive favor and subscribe. And if you will, also press the like button. I couldn't thank you enough for even something that small. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.